Welcome to the Last Christian Radio Show with your hosts, Brother J.D. Williams and Brother T.L. Farley. It's now time to grab your Bible as prophecy brings into focus the events playing out on the world stage at incredible speed, right before our very eyes, and exactly as was foretold. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Last Christian Radio Show. My name is J.D. Williams, and as always, I'm joined there in the Dallas and Fort Worth area by Mr. T.L. Terry Farley. How are you this evening, Terry? Uh, doing good. Uh, drying out from the rain here yesterday, so... Yeah, well, we did have quite a bit of it, that's for sure. We got more coming. Um, uh, this is a yeah. perfect, perfect thing to say there, Terry, because I want to do want to warn people that uh, temperatures are cooling here. And like everybody else in America, uh, facing all these high energy crisis uh, situations because our president won't turn on uh, the oil and gas supply, uh, I'm trying yeah. to save energy. So I've got windows open, cooling down everything uh, here. So if you hear some background noise, some trucks going by, cars, dogs, whatever, uh, <laughs> you can uh, you send, a uh, send a letter to President Joe Biden and tell him to turn the spigot back on to where all of us can get some relief from the high energy costs, okay? And uh, Ooh, then we can like then we can get back like to normal. All right, uh, Terry, uh, that's just kind of a, you know, I'm, I'm just playing around. I'm, I'm serious though, I, really, I do wish that he would turn back on our energy situation. But um, anyway, we've got a lot of stuff to get to and I don't want to waste too much time. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna play, uh, as usual, our news break. Uh, remember now guys, if you have not sub subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so, we continue to grow. Um, we're closing in now on 2,000 subscribers. I never thought we would get to that mark, and you know, once we get to two, then we'll be looking for three. Uh, but the thing is, this isn't about us at all. This is about getting the, uh, the message of Jesus Christ out there, and we are doing Amen. that. So um, anyway, subscribe to the channel, like the videos, uh, share them, uh, make comment. It all helps get that message out. Uh, to everyone, and that's, again, that is our whole purpose. Anyway, here is the latest uh, from the newsroom. Here's the latest from the KRRB newsroom. Georgia Senate candidate Herschel Walker denied an unnamed woman's new claim that in Dallas in 1993, he paid for and strongly encouraged her to have an abortion that she did not want. The woman, only identified as Jane Doe, made her accusations at a video news conference hosted from Los Angeles by her attorney, Gloria Albred. The woman was not shown on camera and said that she feared reprisal if she revealed her true name or face. One person is dead and up to three others are injured after a bridge that was under construction near Kansas City, Missouri collapsed, authorities said. Workers were pouring concrete on the bridge deck when it collapsed Wednesday afternoon before 2 p.m. local time, according to Clay County Sheriff's Office. The bridge collapsed on top of the workers and rescue efforts ensued, Clay County Western Commissioner John Carpenter said. Tesla Incorporated is under investigation in the United States over claims that the company's electric vehicles can drive themselves, three people familiar with the matter said. The U.S. Department of Justice launched the previously undisclosed probe last year following more than a dozen crashes, some of them fatal, involving Tesla's driver assistance system, Autopilot, which activated during the accidents, the people said. Wall Street is losing patience over Meta boss Mark Zuckerberg's enormous and experimental bets on his Metaverse project that has helped drive up the company's overall cost by a fifth in the third quarter. Investors rushed to dump Meta Platform Incorporated stock after hours, pushing it down 20% and wiping $67 billion off its market value after the company posted its fourth straight decline in quarterly profit. And that's the latest news headlines. I'm Alan Edwards. Okay, uh, I'm going to start off here by saying that, you know, every time I hear something about um, the ambulance chasing lawyer out there in L.A., and that's all she is. She's an ambulance <laughs> chaser. Uh, you know, uh, uh, every time I see something, I, you know, the immediate thing that goes into my mind is, okay, uh, here she goes again, and here's another fake one. You know, and that's exactly mm -hmm. what I think. And let me tell you this. Herschel Walker's under attack for one reason. He's winning. And he's going to win in Georgia. He's up by five points. The They're going to do everything oh, that yeah. they possibly can to stop him. And that lady out yeah. there is satanic. She is, yeah. she is probably, well, 
I call them air wasters. And that's what she is. Yeah. I'm so I'm sorry. I yep. know that's I know that's blunt. I know that's hard. But that is my opinion of the lady. She wastes air. Okay, mm-hmm. that's my opinion yeah. of the lady. So um, yeah. now I don't want to make this political today, uh, but instead I want to get into uh, what is going on over in Israel. Uh, the Israeli elections are coming up on Tuesday, November the first. And now in the second half of the show, Terry, it is going to get political, but it's going to get political with Israel, not with the United States. We got plenty of time for that. Yeah. Okay. This sure. is going to be about Israel and the things that are going on there from an Israeli perspective. And I think that that's mm-hmm. really important uh, for people mm-hmm. to understand that the people over there in Israel, this is their fifth election. Okay. Mm-hmm. Coming up. It's fifth election. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, so... You know, things are, things are getting crazy. But anyway, I, w- I do want to start with this one. This is from the Watchman Newscast. Again, a reminder, got to always say it. I am a member of the U.S. Press Association. Eric Sackleback knows that I include his segments on our show. He's fine with that. Um, and, you know, he's welcome to, to use ours. Any agency is welcome to use ours. I hope they use ours. I want the, I want the Christian message out there. So, you know, you got, you got a broadcast. Go ahead, plug me and Terry in. We're good. Okay, just don't edit yeah. us. You know, don't don't take us out of context. But if, as long as you play it in t- in context, you got my permission to do that. Uh, anyway, I want you to take a listen to this one. Um, this is the first one from uh, the Watchman newscast. Take a look. The more Iran is determined to entrench itself in Syria, supply advanced weapons into the hands of Hezbollah in Lebanon, and, and form a forward base. Uh, near Israel's Golan Heights in Syria, the more they do that, and they're hell-bent on doing it, the more Israel pushes them back. They may scale back a bit and back off for a bit, but they'll start back up again because they are obsessed. It's an ideological necessity for them to destroy Israel. What's the first rule of war? Sun Tzu, know your enemy. If you don't understand the ideology of your enemy, you cannot defeat that enemy. This is the ideology of the Iranian regime. So expect things to only heighten in Syria in the weeks and months to come. Obviously prophetic implications, folks, on two fronts. Uh, The book of Isaiah chapter 17 verse 1 talks about a day where Damascus will cease to be a city. Isaiah's words, it will become a ruinous heap. Hey, that hasn't happened yet. Uh, One of the oldest inhabited cities in world history is Damascus. It has never ceased to be a city. Even the Mongols did not completely destroy Damascus. But the Bible says a day is coming when that will happen. And you see all of this activity around Damascus. It makes you wonder. And then we have, of course, Russia still in Syria, still aligned with Israel's greatest enemies and not going anywhere. Vladimir Putin is in Syria to stay And you think of the book of Ezekiel, chapters 38 and 39, the war of Gog and Magog, which we have discussed. Folks, in real time today, you see the prophetic chess pieces moving on the board. Don't be frightened. Don't be discouraged. Be encouraged because you live in Bible times and God is in control. And God is in control is absolutely correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, uh, But we do see it, Terry. We do see... Uh, the possibility of Isaiah 17.1 coming to pass here very quickly. Uh, the same thing with Ezekiel 38, because those countries are beginning to line up. Now, before we, um, uh, before we really get into this, I, I remember that uh, I was talking to you before we even went on the air tonight and told you about mm-hmm. a report that I was seeing uh, coming out of Europe and this was in regard to natural gas. Now, you remember in our show, our previous shows, we were talking about how the French were having to push their um, patrol cars, right? Um, because, you know, the gas supplies and all that were so low. I'm not sure if that plays into this natural gas thing that I'm about to play for you, but mm. remember Nordstrom? The, the, uh, the, the, those two pipelines that were taken out by sabotage, I've got reports coming out to me right now that the United States actually did that, okay? Mm-hmm. It, uh, but again, these are unconfirmed, so I cannot say 
beyond a shadow of a doubt that we did it. However, mm -hmm. there are reports out there that I am trying to confirm that say that, yes, we did do it and that we gave these okay. countries a heads up on it. And mm -hmm. um, so right uh, just about two or three days after that happened, all of a sudden it was announced that there was this new pipeline uh, in Europe for natural gas. It was not coming from Russia. Now, mm -hmm. I didn't really think too much about it at the time because I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, they're putting this pipeline together, right? And it's going to take mm -hmm. them years maybe to do it. Yeah. And then yeah. all of a sudden, all of a sudden, just, uh, I can't remember if it was yesterday or this morning, this was released. Listen to this. Europe has more natural gas than it knows what to do with. So much, in fact, that spot prices briefly went negative earlier this week. For months, officials have warned of an energy crisis this winter as Russia, once the region's biggest supplier of natural gas, slashed supplies in retaliation for sanctions Europe imposed over its invasion of Ukraine. Now, EU gas storage facilities are close to full and prices are tumbling. Davis Richards reporting. How did that happen? Yes. How? <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, man, you know. So uh, what's going on? Yeah. So you know, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, uh, I told you before the show started that you know this is something mm -hmm. new. It just broke. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was like I said, it was either yesterday or today, and I haven't had time to research it yet to figure mm -hmm. out exactly where this natural gas is coming yeah. from. Is yeah. it possible? Yeah. Is it just possible that this natural gas is coming from Israel? Or, yeah, you know, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I, don't, yeah. I, I, I don't, maybe I'm wrong for even mentioning that because I really and honestly do not know and I need to do my research on it. But you had said, you had said a few months back that Israel was selling natural gas to Egypt. Right. I, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to play a part here. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I'm not, I don't, I don't have anything either. So, yeah. No, I don't know. You know, I, I just, I, I just don't know. But I do know this: that Russia knows about it now. And again, you've you've always got to remember that the Russian economy is fueled primarily by natural gas, oil, and coal. So. Russia's interest, of course, is to make money by selling this. Well, they've had their two pipelines now sabotaged, so they can't get natural gas to Europe. They have no delivery system. Their delivery system was taken down. They've got the world against them as far as um, all these sanctions and everything. And so they're losing customers, which means, again, they're not making money. And now all of a sudden this mysterious oil or, or natural gas thing happens. And all of a sudden Europe's got more than it knows what to do with, according to that report. Um, I'm not sure that Russia's going to look at that in a favorable manner. And they're probably... <laughs> 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 What, what, what's your impressions on that? And then I'll tell you where I think it's going. Go ahead. You know, I think you hit the nail on the head. You know, the thing that the, the biggest development out of a story like this is Russia. And how are they going to react? Right. Because uh, this is, you know, my goodness. You know, now I will say this. When you first uh, played that for me before the show, my thought was, praise the Lord. Yeah. Europe's okay going to get through the winter. I mean, that was, you know, that's that first, oh boy, we've got heat, you know, right. and then I think, now, wait a minute, what kind of heat are we, <laughs> are we drawing? <laughs> yeah, 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 things, like, uh, things, things could get, um, th things could get really, Tasty. really bad, really fast, you know, you, you just really have no idea, but, you know, my thought on it is, is that Russia is going to possibly tell the world you know hey you know we've got to y'all are going to have to uh, start buying from us or you know we're or, or they're going to start planning something basically i mean you know i don't know where they're going but all of these elections that are coming up and the, the turmoil that's going on 
it makes me wonder if maybe the good Lord's given people maybe a little bit of a break here, an opportunity, an opportunity to, um, you know, rethink things. And again, in, in the second half of the show, again, we're going to get into the Israeli politics thing because I think that plays more into it than anything else. You know, I mean, that's that's where the real interest should be is on Israel, right? I mean, we shouldn't worry too much as far as events happening elsewhere in the world. It's it's how it affects Israel because that's what God's interest mm -hmm. is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's okay. right. Yeah. Okay. All right. It, well, go go ahead, Terry. Go ahead. Well, you, you got to you know it's uh, he said it in in the what's his name's uh, news uh, shot that you Eric, Eric Stackelbeck. Yeah. Er, Eric. Yeah, mm -hmm. what he said, and I don't know why it never caught me before. I know I get in trouble all the time for saying uh, a day that must be called today. I, I understand that. But what he said, just I never really put it together like this. He said, real time, folks. This is in real time. You're right. That real time is that's the window I keep trying to, to emphasize and talk about because yeah. it's fun to go back and forth put these news things out talk to people about Jesus praise God when people come to the Lord all of that but you know you know how we all hate interruptions if we're doing something we want to do well it's going to be in real time and all of these other things are pushed positioning the world for that very moment and it's it's interesting you know because we've talked about second or first thessalonians 5 and the way it talks about there's going to come a time when everything is really beautiful and peaceful we we don't know what that means right but it says in that moment in real time in that moment of peace and wonderful and what in that real time something's going to happen yeah so that's the beginning of the day of the lord Right. That's the description. We've talked about it. We'll talk about it more as we go along. But right. anyway, that you know what I'm saying? It all the pieces of the puzzle are all coming together. Well, you heard him talk about Isaiah 17. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And also Ezekiel 38. So you know, uh, if if you're following the Bible, you understand this stuff. And and. Uh, it might be helpful. Let me see uh, if I can pull it up here real quick. Give me a second. Um, this is this is the verse that he was talking about. Isaiah seventeen one. The burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. Now yeah. that is a prophecy that is mm -hmm. yet yet to be fulfilled, and. You know, this that's Syria, and Syria is a hot spot, okay? It is a yeah. really a hot spot because of the fact that Iran sends uh, weaponry to the Damascus airport. I want to, you know, mm -hmm. and again, Damascus, okay? We were just talking yeah. about Damascus becoming yeah. a ruinous heap. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, Iran is sending weaponry, and I'm talking like missiles and drones, you know, and these are precision guided missiles, okay? And these, yes. you know, okay, and drones and all that kind of stuff to Damascus, and then out of that Damascus airport, then Hamas takes those and mm -hmm. to where they can use them against Israel. Israel. Okay. So Israel has been flying a lot of sorties into mm -hmm. Syria over Russian troops, by the way. Mm -hmm. they, give, they give Russia a heads up. They say, we're coming. Mm -hmm. You know, this is mm -hmm. where we're going to go. This is what we're going to hit. Mm -hmm. And Russia mm -hmm. has allowed that to happen. Okay. All Russia's got to do is say, you can't do that anymore. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden it, it comes to a point of do they want to do it and risk out and out war with Russia that does mm -hmm. have thousands of troops in Syria. So mm -hmm. with that, I want you to listen to this report. Also, Eric Stackelback from the Watchman Newscast. Listen to this carefully. And of course, mm -hmm. drone assembly factories in Syria now, a big deal. Not the first time that Israel has struck one of those Iranian drone factories in Syria. 
Why is it such a big deal? Well, the drone component will be crucial in Iran's future efforts against Israel. Iran's ring of fire that surrounds Israel right now. And I call it Iran's ring of fire because it consists of all Iranian proxies, whether Islamic Jihad and Hamas in Gaza, Hezbollah in Lebanon, those various Shia militias in Iraq and Syria, and of course the Houthis in Yemen, armed to the teeth with Iranian-supplied rockets, missiles, and attack drones. But Israel apparently through a back channel sent a message to the Assad regime saying, look, if you don't knock it off, if you don't stop with the weapons transfers working with Iran to bring weapons into Syria and Lebanon, if you don't stop, we're going to intensify the airstrikes even more. We'll see if Bashar al-Assad gets the memo and heeds the memo. The major, one of the major factors here is that Russia, which has thousands of troops in Syria at Israel's doorstep, closely aligned, of course, with the Assad regime, with Iran, with Hezbollah, Israel's greatest enemies. Russia has now withdrawn some, at least, of its troops from Syria and some of its S-300 uh, anti or missile defense systems have been removed from Syria and now have been repositioned in Ukraine. So perhaps Israel sees this as a golden opportunity to really push Iran back. The ultimate goal for Israel is to push Iran and Hezbollah completely out of Syria. Which they are not going to be able to do. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to go on record right now that Russia is going to stay, um, Hezbollah is going to stay, Iran is going to stay. All mm -hmm. of those countries that are there now, there is no reason for them to leave. There is no mm -hmm. reason for them to leave. Um, now, Israel did sign, and I did not have time, I apologize to everybody, I didn't have time to put this in today's show. Um, if we have a Tuesday, I mm -hmm. hope to get it in there, but um, Israel did sign the agreement with Lebanon, giving up certain areas of their territorial rights. Now, this is in the this is in the waterways okay mm -hmm. this is offshore but they gave up territorial rights there they signed it over okay mm -hmm. uh, so lebanon who is doesn't even recognize israel's right to exist these guys came in at separate times okay and signed a document they didn't shake hands mm -hmm. there wasn't any agreement and mm -hmm. here's the worst part the agreement actually says the plan is, we hope to, um, it is our goal to give you money. Okay, we hope to do this. Again, they do not recognize Israel's right to exist. What chance do you really think it has that Lebanon is ever going to provide Israel with anything, with a penny? But they have given up some of God's territory. So what is your opinion of, of that breaking news, Tara? Well, I want to I want to step back behind that scene to what you were talking about before in terms of Damascus. And, and I completely agree with with your position with talking about the fact they ain't going nowhere. If we can use the vernacular, they ain't going nowhere. Now, if they're not going anywhere, they become what we call intransigent intransigent they're not going anywhere they're they're this is it this is where they are right and if that's true what other option is there except 17 one right well i, I didn't know, mean to i didn't mean to no, go that far no that's you know, I, that's I, you know, i'm that sorry is, um, the more we you know the more we get into it yeah, that is well, we actually my entire point here. The burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being as hitty, and it shall be a ruinous heap. Isaiah 17, 1, unfulfilled scripture. And we know that that prophecy will, in fact, be fulfilled. We just have no idea when that's going to happen. But if they keep sending weaponry into the Damascus airport, okay mm -hmm. to, to be disseminated mm -hmm. if that continues then and then let's add on to that let's say that lebanon takes this newly found um mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. natural gas and they start selling it and then they say well Israel we can't pay you right now you know, we can't do that we can't do this because of this and because of that but you know we're going to go ahead and continue giving money to Hamas and we're going to mm-hmm. continue to yeah. say you know that you have no right to exist and all that yeah. Uh, yeah. then add into it let's say that Russia gets really ticked off at some point mm-hmm. and they say you know for whatever reason you know uh, maybe it's maybe it's natural gas. Maybe it's something else. Who knows? But let's mm-hmm. say that they they just go ahead and tell Israel, no, you can't you can't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. Normally, when a country does that, normally, and this you know, again, this is all speculation. This is all opinion. This is all J.D. Williams' opinion. Okay. Sure. But let's say that they tell Israel as of make up a date off the top of my head, November the 15th, you can no longer fly into Syria and do anything in the Damascus area. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, what's to stop Israel from saying, okay, that means we can until the 14th, so let's just go ahead and take care of Damascus right now. We'll just make it yeah. to where they can't fly anything in there. Boom, bang, yeah. it's over. Yeah. Okay, what yeah. prevents them from doing that? Yeah, nothing. In fact, uh, it, it's all, like I said, the closer the pieces get together, we've got to realize that the, this oil thing has hurt Russia. We do not know how much financially or monetarily that it has hurt them, but it's hurt them. Now, what if the hooks in the jaw, I'm just saying, mm-hmm. what if the hooks in the jaw are monetary need? If they suddenly and they yeah. look because man, now yeah. wait a minute, stay with me. Okay. Stay with me. Okay. What is the word what is the word that is used in the prophecy that keys the whole thing? They go down there for what? For spoils. Right. Right. They go that, down there that part spoils. that part I agree with. They're, yeah. They're going yeah. down, they're going down to get something. Ooh, I don't have any tomatoes. You've got a bushel of tomatoes. Guess where I'm going? Yeah. Well, in this case, it's not, I've, I've never changed my opinion on that. I've never sure. changed my opinion on that. I, I believe that I believe that the uh, the hook in the jaw is natural gas and oil. Yeah. I, you know, I've, yeah. I've said that for months, and I, you know, I, well, I'm I'm not backing off on that at all. The, yeah. when, when you said economics, that's what got me out of it because I, you know, I said okay, yeah. because uh, you know, it's it's really specific yeah. that that they're not going down for. You know, for anything other than spoil, and yeah. that's the reason sure. I shook my head. No, sure. that ain't it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, anyway, I do. I do sincerely believe that um, that the hook in the jaw is the is the natural gas and oil thing. And you've got to remember that here in the United States, I mean, all of a sudden, Europe, for whatever miraculous reason, all of a sudden their stockpile is back. You know, and again, I'm going to do research into that and find out what, why, why, what happened. Why is it full? What, what, yeah, you know, what, what are they getting it from? You know, yeah. Yeah, because there was nothing, you know, there was no supporting uh, news reports of, of just how this happened. It's just, it happened. Okay, now, yeah. I would feel the same way if all of a sudden tomorrow they came out and said, Okay, well, you know how we've been worrying about the Northeast not having uh, fuel oil for the winter, and you know uh, they're talking about rationing and all this kind of stuff. If all of a sudden overnight they said, "Oh, they're all full, everything's good now," yeah. you know, I, yeah. I would have the same shock that sure. that I that I experienced when I heard that report. And I'm looking yeah. forward into doing the research there, but here. In the United States, we are still facing the possibility of our Northeast states not having the fuel oil that they need and that the fuel oil prices have gone up so high that especially elderly people, people that are on fixed incomes and that kind of thing, they don't have the money to buy what is available. So they buy, you know, very small quantities to go month to month. Now, how you know, I mean, we all have electric bills, and we know, we know that if we don't pay our electric bill, the electric company is going to shut off our power, <laughs> right? And we're and we're going to be in the dark. Um, but how would you like to go through month to month wondering, you know, do I have enough money to pay for electricity this month, or do or, or 
fuel oil, I should say. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Do I have enough money to pay for this much fuel oil or, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've got to pay this much for groceries. I got to pay this much to move mm -hmm. myself from point A to point B. You know, I've mm -hmm. got these other bills. Can I afford fuel oil this month or do I have to cut my groceries back to where I'm living on spam, which, by the way, I mm -hmm. will not eat or, mm -hmm. um, you know, what? I don't know, Terry. I don't know what's going on right now. I do know that the that the elections are coming up, and you know, if things don't go the way we hope they will, this situation mm -hmm. with um, with that fuel oil situation and mm -hmm. gas prices and all that, our emergency oil reserves, everything there, it's all going to come crashing down on us really mm -hmm. hard. Mm -hmm. Don't don't you think? And that's yeah, and that's where we go right back to Matthew chapter 6 and Jesus delineating the, the, the worries of the world, the concerns of the world. They're saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to wear? Where are we going to live? All of this. And he said, if you believe in me, you don't trust in that. Now, we say to ourselves, wait a minute, that's in the equation, these needs. Uh, we admit they're, they're in the... But he's saying... You don't really understand. I'm the one that made the sun come up this morning. Right. And I know, I can tell you, I'm not going to, I can tell you what time tonight it's going to set. If you needed to know that, for there was some, I could tell you the exact second when it was going to go behind the surface of the earth and you'd be in dark. He said, you know, he said, I know all of these things. He said, I want you to watch me because as we get forward and as these things get closer and closer, People are going to be asking these questions. People who are silent are going to be asking. And this is the opportunity for us to come in with Jesus and say, he said uh, 2,000 years ago, this is the way the world was going to get. And now I want you to turn to me. I've, I've been living on that passage of scripture uh, almost most of my life. Long story short, I can't go on forever. But the reality is that passage is true. God has proved it to me over and over and over again. And we need to get that message out to these people. And maybe one of them is going to be the last Christian. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's the hope, isn't it? You know, um, yeah, amen. Uh, amen. Uh, now, I, I want to emphasize again, our show is heard all over the world. You know, and yeah. some of our most loyal listeners or in some of the places that some of you people would never guess. And I'm speaking of Iran, Iraq, mm -hmm. North Korea. That's mm -hmm. via a, a shortwave broadcast that a, a, a friend Thank runs. you, Jesus. Amen. Um, Thank you, Jesus. It's getting into Turkey, into the Ukraine, into Russia, Thank you. Thank you. into Saudi Arabia. And most importantly for me, it's getting into Israel. Okay. Amen. So Amen. the whole purpose of our show, I've got to emphasize it because it is the whole purpose of the show. And that is mm -hmm. we are looking for that last individual to Amen. say that prayer of salvation to mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, ask him to come into their life as their Lord and Savior, to forgive mm -hmm. them of their sins. And I want to emphasize this too. A lot of times I go into, you know, here's the prayer, say the prayer. God listens to your heart. It's not the words that come out of your mouth. It's what is Amen. in your heart. So if you will simply accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, God will hear you. And if you do, you will be saved. And you just might be that last individual that uh, Terry was just talking about. Amen. The last person to accept Jesus Christ as Savior before the rapture of the church. Do not wait till the rapture happens because at that point, no. if you waited past that, you've got to go through at least part of the tribulation. So I implore you to please accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now. If you do it, tell somebody, write us. Tell Amen. us you did it. Tell us you Amen. did it, okay? Please. And I, you know, I, it, it's important. It's this is the most important decision of your life, bar none. So that is what Terry and I are, are really fighting for here is to get the message of Jesus Christ out. This is another reason that we keep saying if you are watching us on YouTube, 
subscribe to the channel, share the videos, make a comment. All of this plays into those analytics, okay? Yes. And that's how YouTube is distributed. That's what blew us up all of a sudden is because somebody found us and somebody really began to put it out there. And now we haven't looked back. I mean, it's just going on and on because people are hungry for this message, Terry, especially where yes. the Bible is banned because they can try to ban the Bible, but they can't do it. They absolutely can't do it. They try to stop the message of Jesus Christ. They can't do it. Okay. Amen. Now, we've again, got to remember, we've also got to remember Galatians six ten. Paul said, ministering especially, especially to the household of faith, because there are people in our own world, in our own country, and in every place in the world who are Christians. They right. do believe, and they're being persecuted, and they're being, and we want to encourage them. Jesus is with you. Amen. For those of you leaving us. Hope to well, see you on Tuesday. Is that for some of you, this is the end of this edition of the internationally syndicated Last Christian Radio Show. If you would like to hear the second half of the show, we do invite you to visit www.lastchristian.net. That's www.lastchristian.net for all editions of the Last Christian Radio Show. And of course, also the Last Christian Podcast that is heard every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. For everyone else, we'll be back after the break for the second half of the internationally syndicated Last Christian Radio Show. Conversations with Don Karima airs on Revelation Radio every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central Time. I'm Dr. Don Karima, a Native American Music Award winner, Indigenous Artist Activist Award winner, the winner of two Global Music Awards, and an Indigenous Music Award nominee. I am an award-winning author, filmmaker, media creator, artist, and indigenous inspiration. But the greatest joy of my life is serving the Lord Jesus Christ and my beautiful indigenous people. My home is the Kuala Boundary Reservation in Cherokee, North Carolina, in the midst of the Great Smoky Mountains. But we speak with people all over the world who are doing wonderful, dynamic things in their communities. And I hope you'll join us for our conversations on Conversations with Don Karima, right here on Revelation Radio. Rick Warren writes, The purpose of your life is far greater than your personal fulfillment, your peace of mind, or even your happiness. It's far greater than your family, your career, or even your wildest dreams and ambitions. If you want to know why you were placed on this planet, you must begin with God. You were born by His purpose and for His purpose. You see, God has a plan for your life. His plan was designed for you before you were even born. God is faithful and He will work out His plan for your life. He will never let go of your hand. What He has started in you, He will bring to completion in His time and in His way. So hold on tightly to the promises of God and never let go. Declare, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God tracking is tracking the plans and purposes of God. I'm Dudley Anderson. This radio segment was produced by Sure Reality. You can find out more at the website surereality.net. KRRB Revelation Radio broadcasts to all 50 U.S. states and more than 160 countries around the world, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We offer the perfect platform for you to host your very own radio show locally, nationally, or to a worldwide audience. And if you're a podcaster or social media content creator, upgrade your productions to digital radio and explode your listening audience. Gain new subscribers, be invited on other podcast or radio shows as a guest, or find guests for your productions. No matter your topic or genre, if it's suitable for all audiences and age groups, you're invited to join the Revelation Radio family. We know you'll love the results. 
But to make sure radio is for you, your first 90 days are absolutely free without any obligation or hidden fees. For more information or to get started today, visit www.revelationradio.net or email us at info at revelationradio.net today. KRRB DB, Grand Saline, Canton, Mineola, Texas. Here's the latest from the KRRB Newsroom. This is the latest news headlines in 60 seconds with Alan Edwards. A senior Russian government official raised the possibility that Moscow can shoot down commercial Western satellites being used to help Ukraine's war efforts. A union representing 6,000 rail workers said its members have voted against ratifying the tentative agreement brokered between rail companies, unions, and members of President Joe Biden's administration in September. Uh, I think there's a there's a path forward for us to get another tentative agreement, get it back out for vote. Europe has more natural gas than it knows what to do with. So much, in fact, that spot prices briefly went negative earlier this week. Georgia Senate candidate Herschel Walker denied an unnamed woman's new claim that in Dallas in 1993, he paid for and strongly encouraged her to have an abortion that she did not want. That's the latest headlines in 60 seconds. I'm Alan Edwards. Welcome back to the second half of the syndicated Last Christian Radio Show with J.D. Williams and T.L. Farley. Okay, Terry, we are back. Uh, sorry I had to cut you off there, but when no, you're out of time, you're out of time, you know. So uh, Haven't I been saying that? Haven't I been saying that? <laughs> well, okay, there, there is your rapture moment, okay, because uh, Terry was right there in, in mid-thought, and all of a sudden, it's done, okay? Perfect example of the rapture, wouldn't you say? Amen. Oh, yes. Sparkling example. Sparkling. <laughs> now, you know, um, I, I didn't mention this in the first half of the show, but uh, Russia has now been talking about these um, satellites that are giving military information to the people there in the Ukraine as to where their troops are, what the movements are and all that. And the United States is a big part of that, by the way. The United States uh, providing information. There's a lot of people providing information. Israel, um, my understanding is that they may be giving them some information, but they don't want that, you know, they don't want there to be any confirmation of that because that, that could be very, very detrimental to them. So what they have been focusing on is they say, we're helping the Ukraine with humanitarian efforts, with food and, you know, uh, hospital care and that type of thing. But as far as military, you know, we're not there yet. And there, uh, I believe if Israel ever said that they would provide them weaponry or, you know, inform intelligence information, I think that would be a... a a turning point you know yeah and here in the united states for whatever reason we've had an infatuation with russia for what six years or so something like yeah. that mm -hmm. and the push the democrats are actually trying to push us into war i mean every time you look mm -hmm. around that's really what they're trying to do sending more and more and more um help to the ukraine and especially with the uh you know, if, if they are providing satellite information, and I have every reason to believe that is the case, um, mm -hmm. Russia doesn't like that, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the Ukraine doesn't have all this technology. You know, they've got to yeah. be getting their information from somebody. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think we might be that somebody because mm -hmm. all these other NATO nations, they kind of rely on us, right? So mm -hmm. um, anyway... Uh, like I said, I didn't I didn't really get into that too much in in the first part of the show, but I am going to touch on it in in this part of the show some uh, because it is going to be an issue. 
it, it, you know, yeah, well, it, yeah. it's definitely going to be an issue. But anyway, I told you that the second half of the of the program tonight was was going to be centered more on Israel and its coming mm -hmm. elections. Again, this is coming up this Tuesday. This is coming up Tuesday, uh, mm -hmm. November the first. The Israelis go to the polls. So let, again, Eric Sackleback, Watchman Newscast. Um, he had a sit-down interview with with some people there in Israel about uh, the elections that I thought was very very informative, and I've actually got two clips. This is the first one, so let's take a look at it. Why it will have major ramifications for the Jewish state, the United States, and the world. Take a look, Alex. Number five in under three years. How did we get here? Well, we've had. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu for 12 years consecutive, 15 years in total. And uh, while he's been probably one of the greatest prime ministers in Israeli history, uh, not every parliamentarian likes working with him. And so even though he remains Israel's most popular politician by a large margin, Israelis don't vote directly for their prime minister. You go to the ballot, you vote for a party. And then it's up to the parliamentarians to actually form a majority coalition. And unfortunately, you have too many parliamentarians that don't want to uh, rally and join a coalition led by Netanyahu. The reason why we've had five elections is because those same parliamentarians that don't want to join Netanyahu also have a hard time forming a majority <coughs> coalition to block him. So we continue to have a standoff after standoff, and now we're going to our fifth election in less than three years. Yes, yeah, so it's not a situation, Alex, you broke it down beautifully. It's not a situation like in the United States, for instance, a Trump versus Biden. This is almost like party versus party in a sense. Correct. If, if Israelis would go to the polls and pick their prime minister directly, Netanyahu would win by a su substantial margin. Yeah. Now, he has to form a coalition, Rufi, of 61 seats in the Knesset. Right. There are 120 seats in the Knesset. So 61 gives you a majority. Traditionally, this was too razor thin a majority. Usually, there are much larger majority but in the last years because of many reasons having to do with raising the electoral threshold and lowering the electoral threshold and trying various uh, methods to make it more of a slam dunk vic victory for, for one of, or other of the big parties it's been a mess and Alex is right. This has to do with, uh, partly, with hatred on the part of many par parliamentarians, hatred of Netanyahu. Personal animal. Personal. Yeah. However, let me say how ironic it is that his party has garnered and continues to more seats than any individual other party. And that is the Likud party. That's the Likud party. And in addition to that, in every single poll of, uh, between Netanyahu and the other heads of parties, he is way above in uh, uh, suitability for the premiership. Yeah. So uh, the thing is about him that it is true that he can be antagonistic to his rivals. However, he was not the long Israel's longest serving prime minister in history for nothing. Yeah. He was a great leader, and uh, I think, and, and most Israelis know that. Okay. Now, you know what I got out of that? The, yeah. the uh, Knesset didn't want any more mean tweets. Well, yeah, okay. yeah I can see I mean, that. that that's, that's what, uh, you know, here in the United States, what was the, what was the driving force of the uh, 2020 election? What did it mean, yeah, tweets? It, yes, it sure was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. it's. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, it's the uh, what, what do they call that uh, that they've been introducing in the last oh, I don't know ten years or fifteen years uh, the, the social the proper uh, speak what do they call it um, cancel culture is what they call it no 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 not cancel <laughs> culture uh, in fact uh, Obama was speaking at a, a breakfast a Christian Open breakfast. Change. Yeah. No, no, no. He was speaking there, and when he was there, and I'm trying to remember who it was, got up and talked. Uh, the, the way when you're uh, politically correct, politically correct language. This is what they're. This is the whole thing, and this is where CRT came out of. Okay, yeah. that's what it was birthed through. That. 
Uh, and this is this, you know, you have to say certain things a certain way. You can't say such and such because that's, that's offensive. And, that's exactly you know. what I was talking about when I said cancel yes. culture. Yes. If you are not, yes. if, if you are yes. in tune with what they want to do with the with the 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 line, you know, following the line, mm -hmm. then they want to mm -hmm. cancel you. Okay, they do yeah. not want yeah. opinion out there. Opinion, and there were, and there free were speech. Yeah, free yeah. speech is out. Movements. That's it. There were movements. At long story short, uh, in the seventies, uh, there were movements of, of groups that were practicing canceling things. If right. you didn't like something, you were supposed to mentally, in your mind, cancel it. That has grown and festered into this monster uh, conglomeration of people accepting the idea of. Well, if I don't like what you say, I'm going to cancel you out in right. one way or in, in another. And that's what that whole thing, and it just goes directly against free speech. Okay. You know? That's, now, it's, okay. I've got, got a couple of things for you. I do not have clips, okay? So you, yeah. guys, you guys are probably clapping your hands. I don't have a clip for this, but... Um, no, I'm not. It, it was just <laughs> it, it was just released, and again, this happened overnight or... You know, I, I believe it was yesterday when the news broke mm -hmm. on this. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, I, I could have included clips in it, but I didn't think it was necessary. Here's the deal. Yeah. CNN, the people at that network, and this is not a secret. Even CNN is reporting this themselves, okay? Mm -hmm. They have a new guy in charge, and he has been taking out some of these uh, people that have really been over the top socialists. He's already fired them. There's a few of them that are already yeah. gone. Like Brian Seltzer, for instance, gone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. uh, Chris Como, gone. You know, for, yeah. other, for other reasons, but uh, sure. it, it was just an excuse to get rid of him. Yeah. But, yeah. but this new guy sent out a memo to the CNN people and told them that there are major changes coming by the end of the year that are going to affect them personnel, you know, personnel and the way that things are produced. They want to get mm -hmm. back to a uh, less biased network, something that was like in the, in the early 90s, back when they were yes. sort of the... Uh, back in the early 90s, just a personal note here, back in the early 90s, I relied on CNN. I, yeah. I, would, I would look at Fox News and say, okay, that's, you know, extreme right, it's all you know. Mm -hmm. and now remember, a lot of this also was kind of like pre BC, pre before yeah. Christ, before Christ. Sure, sure. But sure. but um, they they were really strong on the uh, conservative right wing ideology, and mm -hmm. MSNBC was socialist even then, and that was the type of stuff that they were putting together. So I would listen to both those networks and then go to CNN. Mm -hmm to get the, mm -hmm. you know, kind of the mid-road type stuff, okay? Yeah. And, well, they want to get back to that. Now, mm -hmm. you, you say, okay, well, why in the world would they want to do that if they're successful? Well, they're not successful. Here's, here's yeah. the deal. That this, is, this is true. This is factual. And anybody, mm -hmm. who, you know, again, I could go back and find clips, but I, I encourage you guys to do it instead. Mm -hmm. CNN now has their normal listening audience is 500,000. And you know who their main competitor is? It's, mm -hmm. not, it, it's not MSNBC. It's not Fox. It's not mm -hmm. any of the networks you see on TV. Their main mm -hmm. competitor is YouTube. YouTube has act wow. that's that's where they're they're competing against people like me and you Terry that's who they're wow. competing against okay wow. they've got wow. they have got to do something okay mm -hmm. got off track there for a second I want to get back because I do want to get this last one in about the Israeli elections let's take a look at mm -hmm. it what are the ramifications mm -hmm. for Israel and Israel standing in the world uh, I can tell you what I hope for I hope that uh, the right has a clear majority. I hope the polls are only partly right. In other words, I hope the polls are wrong, that there's just uh, 
equal numbers of uh, an inability to form a coalition. I hope that in November, the midterms will show Republicans taking back Congress. And then the other challenges that are that Israel and America need to meet as allies, as natural allies, but not natural left wing allies, natural conservative liberal in the old style sense yeah. of liberal conservative yeah. allies and i hope that that gets restored yeah they're pretty incredible alex two crucial crucial elections for two crucial partners the united states and israel back to back just one week apart what are your thoughts well if you look at yair lapid's brief tenure as the interim caretaker prime minister he went to the united nations and he stated explicitly that israel should uh, work towards negotiating a two-state solution with the palestinian authority that comes after nine years in which uh, former prime minister benjamin netanyahu refused to meet with mahmoud abbas or any members of the palestinian authority in this last year when netanyahu has been out of office uh, benny gantz met multiple times with mahmoud abbas yeah. he invited him to his home in rosh Ayn in central Israel. Uh, and I think that it's very clear that if the left will get into power, especially with uh, a left-wing Biden administration in office, that there will be a very hard push to try to bring Israel back towards the failed Oslo two-state paradigm. Uh, and I think that it represents a grave danger for Israel. In addition, we saw and we discussed how Lapid completely capitulated to Hezbollah on the northern border regarding the natural gas. And uh, Israel may come to a head with the Iranian nuclear issue in these next mm -hmm. coming years. Netanyahu is stated as much in an interview that I did with him just recently. Uh, he believes that it's his job to make sure that Iran never crosses the nuclear threshold. If you look at how Lapid and Gantz uh, are trying to deal with the Palestinian Authority and with Hezbollah, it seems pretty clear that they may just allow Iran to cross that nuclear threshold, which would represent an existential threat to the state of Israel. So I think that there's a lot on the line. Uh, and. I think many Israelis are hoping that the most tried and tested statesman, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, will return to power on November 1st. Okay. I don't know if you caught that or not, but uh, the left wing there in Israel is actually open to allowing Iran to acquire a nuclear weapon. Now, that, that in itself should be extremely scary. Um, and Terry, believe it or not, we are basically out of time okay yeah. but uh but what i want to do here and to to end this is give people a little hope so mm -hmm. uh you, I, I want you really briefly and i mean really briefly like a minute okay, uh, okay. i want you to speak quickly of blast off for pm more and then very quickly about what's coming up tomorrow night on from the eye of the storm Okay, uh, blast off for PMOR. Uh, I, want, I want to throw this in and tie it together with everything we're doing. Uh, in the 70s, even, uh, there were uh, news shows that offered all kinds of opinions. You could turn the channel. And and, and as we went forward into the 80s and the 90s and, and to this present day, that that number has shrunk until where now there's almost no uh, right wing or, or even middle center news anymore. Uh, all of that. This is a fulfillment of prophecy. Blast off repeal more is on the very head of the pin at the very point of the sword of prophecy because it's the only prophecy that needs to be fulfilled uh, at any moment uh, in real time as we are talking. Uh, and then going on tomorrow night, we're in Proverbs, and please check it out. Uh, there's a lot of snafus from uh, different technical problems, but there's some real good rich meat uh, on Proverbs and God's leading us and teaching us we don't need to be afraid. If you're following him, you're in the best hands possible. And that airs uh, tomorrow evening, Sunday evening, 7.30 p.m. Central Time, right here on Revelation Radio. Um, if we're able to have a, uh, a Tuesday, we will be back with you next Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. Uh, Central Time, right here on Revelation Radio. And of course, on all the other platforms, I everywhere. Go to church tomorrow. We hope to see you on Tuesday. Until then, good night and God bless. Amen. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today for The Last Christian Radio Show. And be sure to tune in every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday right here on Revelation Radio.
And don't forget to join us every Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. Central for The Last Christian Podcast, now available on all major podcast platforms and at www.lastchristian.net. Until the trumpet sounds.